Good morning, all of you. In today's session, we are going to start with CSR and JRF Chemical Science, December 2014, Part B, Series 1. Earlier, we completed 2014, June, 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 CSR net GRF chemical science question papers of both the sessions, including June and December. All the detailed solved question papers are available on the channel called the World of Computative Chemistry. This kind of standard previous year's CSR net GRF question paper discussion will fetching you towards research aspiration, entrance examinations, and any competitive exam you are preparing for. So let us discuss about today's concepts. Where it is? Here. Right. So here, this is a, a CSR and HGRF chemical science, December 2014, part B series one, consisting questions from 21 to 35. Let's, let us start with question number 21. The reaction between stabium pentafluoride and two equivalents of hydrochloric acid leads to the formation of uh, Stabium pentafluoride being it is a Lewis acid can be treated with HF and there is a formation of compound. So being it is a Lewis acid having tendency to accept F minus and in turn converted into stabium hexafluoride. Pentafluoride now converted into stabium hexafluoride. Stabium hexafluoride is generated. This should be the subscript here. Sorry. Right. Stabium pentahexafluoride uh, and the uh, what happens being it is uh, two moles of HF, it turned into H2F positive because loss of F minus, hence it is converted into a positively charged ion, right? So in this manner, we got the product, uh, <clears throat> we got the product which is known as fluoroantimonic acid. The formed fluoroantimonic acid is uh, what over billion times a stronger acid. So it is a known, among all the known acids as of now, so earlier we can say king of the acids will be sulfuric acid, right? So when compared to 100% pure sulfuric acid, so when we compare this uh, uh, fluoroantimonic acid, it will be a billion times stronger in nature. It is the uh, known stronger acid as of now. So it is also known as super acid even, right? So that is available in stabium hexafluoride minus and h 2 f positive. So this is the Lewis acid and it used to accept F minus and turned into he um, stabium hexafluoride and H2F positive formation is possible. These are available in the option number four. For question number 21, option number four is the right answer. <clears throat> Let us move on to question number 22. The delta bond, uh, delta bond formed via the overlap of, right? So in order to get the sigma bond, what is the condition? Sigma bond is uh, formed by the end to end overlapping, which is also known as axial overlapping. When we go with pi bond formation, that is because of the axial, uh, sorry, lateral overlapping, which is called the sideways overlapping. So that is uh, for pi bond formation. In order to get the delta bond, the condition will be d orbital double dumbbell lobes involved in the participation of bond. Most probably d block elements will participate in the delta bond formation. <coughs> In order to get the delta bond formation, let us see the condition. Sigma bond is originated by axial overlapping. Two orbitals are uh, inclined in the axis and both are going to mix and there is a formation of sigma, sigma bond. In order to get the pi bond, the sideways overlap of the orbitals are possible. That in turn known as a lateral overlapping. So in order to get the pi bond again, your uh, so orbitals uh, will participate just now we discussed and um, delta bond, how it could be? Both the lobes of double dumbbell orbital will participate in this delta bond formation. Dxy and dx square minus y square having the provision because, uh, because of their suitable orientation, they don't lead two lobes are in the way to participate in the delta bond formation. The condition for delta bond formation is so being it is a double dumbbell, the orbital is a double dumbbell loop. So two lobes of one d orbital and two lobes of any other d orbital again participate in the bond formation in the sideways manner and delta bond will be originated. The orbitals responsible for delta bond formation could be dxy dx square minus y square. These two are available on dxy and dx square minus y square. So here, First option, even third option, both are having the correct answers. 
So we can say one and three are the correct answer for question number twenty-two. Let us move on to question number twenty-three. Among chloride, sodium positive, oxygen uh, di negative. O minus two and magnesium di-positive ions, those having highest and the lowest ionic radii respectively. So it is the kind of periodic trend for uh, atomic radius. General trends of periodic uh, properties are so in order to assume for uh, atomic radius. So when we move on from bottom in a group, you can take any kind of group in the entire periodic table. If you are descending from top to bottom in a group, what happens gradually? Size of the atom. Increases that purely because of for each group addition, sorry, for each atom addition in the group, what happens? One of the new shell will be added, and the size will be expanded. That's the reason why when we're descending in a group from top to bottom, so size of the atom will be gradually increases. That is a general trend for the atomic radius in a group. If we consider a period. A period consists of left to right. As we are moving from left to right in a period, so what happens? Electrons will be added to the same shell. Number of shells will not be in increased. Rather, what happens? Nuclear charge will be raised from one atom to any other if we are moving from left to right. So that as the gradual increase in the nuclear charge, that will strongly pull the electrons inside. So that left to right in the period, the size of the atom gradually decreases. Group there is an increase in the size of atom. A period consists of a gradual decrease in the size of atom is possible. Now, so the trend is given with the charges. So we have to consider the charges. If the charged atoms are provided, then what will be the trend in order to measure their ionic radii? So. Larger the negative charge imparted to the atom, larger will be the size. Larger the positive charge imparted for the atom, smaller will be the size. How can we explain this reason? That is clearly explained by nuclear charge J effective. Nuclear charge is known as J effective. So if we consider F minus and O minus two, what happens? Oxygen. How many electrons? How many protons are there in O minus two? So we will we will discuss in detail for one atom so that it will be clear for all. If you are taking oxygen, being its atomic number is eight, so eight protons will be there in the neutral oxygen atom, and also having equal number of electrons. Being it is a neutral, a number of electrons and protons are exactly equal. So if it is associated with minus two charge. What happens? Number of protons are eight, but number of electrons are ten. Means more two electrons are present. Then what will be the J effective? Nuclear charge is eight, but number of electrons are ten. Means a uh, uh, negative charge is uh, two units more when compared to the nuclear charge. That's the reason why. Uh, what happens? Nuclear effect will be less on the Outer electrons and being it is minus two, there is a repulsive forces between the two electrons so that it will expand the size. That's the second reason. The major reason will be J effective for negatively charged ion will be less because number of protons will be lesser than number of electrons. Electrons having more number, that's why they will occupy larger space. The space of outer orbital from the central nucleus is said to be a atomic radius, right? When the electrons are occupied, they are uh, they are occupying the larger space in the outer region. That's the reason why, uh, as the negative charge in the atom increases, the size of the atom gradually increases. So here, when you compare all F minus O minus two, O minus two obviously having more number of electrons, correspondingly, greater will be the size of this kind of ion. Later. F minus. Then, when we compare the positive charges, I will explain again with the one atom mg plus two. So, what will be the J effective for mg plus two? If we consider mg plus two, what will be the atomic number of magnesium? Magnesium atomic number will be twelve, and it is accompanied by a di positive charge. Plus two charge is there on the atom, right? So, being it is di positive, what happens? What will be the nuclear charge, and what will be the number of electrons present in this? Right? When you take neutral magnesium, twelve protons as well as twelve electrons will be associated with this one. But when it is in plus two oxidation state, number of protons will be twelve. There is no change. We are not going to remove any protons. Being it is uh, um, 
incorporated in the nucleus, it is not possible to remove the protons, right? So that's the reason why number of protons remains same. Within the nucleus, 12 protons are there. Then from the outer shell, we are removing two electrons in order to attain the stable, uh, stable noble gas configuration, right? So that's the reason why number of electrons will become 10 and that resembles a neon, neon electronic configuration. So 12 protons, 10 electrons, which is more nuclear charge is more. That means the central nucleus having the greatest charge, obviously greater effective nuclear charge, uh, mu sorry, jet effective value will be more and having strong tendency to pull 10 electrons. 12 protons having strong tendency to pull uh, 10 electrons. That's the reason why size will be concised because of jet effective value will be more when compared to electron count. This will be the variation between the negative and positive charges so that subsequently as the positive charge accumulation and the atom increases, subsequently its size will be concise because of jet effective will be higher. In this manner, Mg plus 2 will be the smaller among all and uh, any place uh, next uh, level ion with a somewhat larger size and the next will come F minus fluoride and the next is about oxide. Being it is minus 2, jet effective will be extremely low so that here repulsive, sorry, attractive forces are minimized. So that larger will be O minus 2 followed by F minus, NA plus and the least is imparted for Mg plus 2. Then what they are asking for highest and lowest anic ready. Highest is imparted for oxide, lowest is imparted for magnesium. Oxide and magnesium are available on option number 3, right? Highest for oxygen, lowest for magnesium. That is available in the option number three. For question number 23, option number three will be the right answer. This is a question from periodic properties. Let us move on to question number 24. The extent of pi electron conjugation in the macrocyclic ring systems of heme, coenzyme B12 and the chlorophyll follows the order. Uh, this is the question from bio inorganic, bio inorganic chemistry. First, let us discuss what are the uses of all these. Later, we will enter into how much, how extent of electron conjugations are available on, on these complexes. Heme is a uh, coloring pigment which is available in all living or uh, um, human beings, especially mammals, right? So here, iron is a central metal and used to carry the oxygen to all the organs present in the body. So that is the purpose of this heme oxygen transportation. And next is about coenzyme B12. Coenzyme B12 is nothing but cyanocobalamin. It's a chemical name is cyanocobalamin. And uh, vitamin B12 it will be. And its main purpose is uh, it is used to uh, neurostimulant uh, that used to stimulate the nervous system, right? And next is about chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the plant green color pigment which is available in the chloroplast. And it, it is the essential material in order to carry the life process called photosynthesis. That is the source of energy from uh, uh, sun, it will accept sunlight and that used to convert the carbon dioxide molecule into a food material. So for that purpose, this chlorophyll can be utilized and the central metal will be magnesium, right? So now we have to predict pi electron conjugation available on all these macrocyclic ring structures. Let us move on to heme first. When you observe the heme, so here, uh, uh, four five-membered rings and the four six-membered rings are available within the molecule and central iron will be uh, in plus two when it is deoxy. When it is oxy, it will be plus three, right? Now let us count number of conjugated electron systems. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. How many conjugated electron systems are there around this? This is a kind of system called a peripheral ring system where 11 conjugated electrons are found, conjugated uh, pi electron bonds are found in this. So 11 will be imparted for heme. Let us move on to coenzyme B12 called a cyanocobalamin. When you observe the uh, chemical structure of cyanocobalamin, it will be somewhat lengthy. And uh, what can you find in this? The system around the cobalt. Here, cobalt is the central metal, which is in plus three oxidation state. And this is a system called a corin system. Corin system is available in this uh, cobalt. And uh, this is the histidine moiety. Uh, imidazole ring will be there within the uh, structure. And uh, here, let us count the number of pi electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six pi electron system. Heme is associated with 11. Whereas uh, cyanocobalamin, six pi electron system will be there. 
what is the third bioinorganic molecule that is chlorophyll chlorophyll is the uh, exclusive material available in the plant because of this one only here uh, photosynthesis process carried in the plant materials here is the system again it is a purifying ring system only just it resembles a heme which are available in your human beings just we have to replace magnesium uh, sorry iron with the magnesium iron plus 2 can be replaced with magnesium so that it turned into a uh, it turned into a green color pigment if iron is there red color pigment if magnesium is there this is a green color pigment right so this is the kind of system called the chlorophyll where uh, again porphyrin ring system will be there around the magnesium again let us count how many pi electron conjugation will be there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 uh, 10 total 10 pi electrons are available in this chlorophyll 11 for heme 6 for cyanocobalamin 10 for this chlorophyll then what will be the order of pi electron conjugation where you can find a high number obviously for heme so heme imparted with uh, a so a will be the topmost one and the chlorophyll with a 10 pi electron conjugation this will be an, in a second position so second will be c and the least will be imparted for cyanocobalamin being it is a six pi electron conjugated system least is imparted for this one a c d is a correct order that is available in option number 1 for question number 24 option number 1 will be the right answer let us move on to question number 25 the question number 25 the correct order of retention of cations in the sulfonated cation exchange resin in the column e. this is a question given from uh, chromatographic methods where ion exchange process got carried because of adsorption rate of their adsorption and uh, uh, adsorption parameters uh, what happened their uh, their uh, retention uh, will be possible right so here uh, you can clearly find that smaller the size what happens greater the affinity with the resin molecule it will not come uh, faster out so greater the size so being it is having lesser tendency to bind and uh, which easy to flow that's the reason why silver having greater extent of retention factor and uh, next is about potassium followed by sodium and the lithium will be least being it is a smaller one strongly binded to the resin and will not come out uh, easily so this is the reason and uh, let us see what will be the Uh, what will be the cation exchange the sulfonated resin that is indicated in this manner where you can find the uh, resin moiety is nothing but it is a polymeric chain and a terminal center consisting active functional group that is sulfonated moiety this having strong tendency to liberate being sulfonate uh, sulfonic acid will be the h plus ion donor right here sulfonic acid aso3 minus when taken what happens negative charges there it having tendency to retain the cations retain the cations right so this is a kind of system called the sulfonated cation exchange resin it will reduce h plus and accept all the cations which ever available in the given uh, eluting solution right so here this is a kind of system called sulfonated cation resin now what will be the order lithium is the least next is about sodium next is about potassium and the higher is imparted for uh, silver this is purely based on their size being silver it is a larger uh, atom because from left to right what happens the size will be gradually increase silver will be the larger one followed by potassium followed by sodium and the least size will be for lithium right so in this manner for this question number 25 option number 1 will be the right answer next let us move on to question number 26 in a polarographic measurement aqueous potassium chloride solution used as a supporting electrolyte and applied potential is plus 0.4 volts results mainly uh, in the formation of uh, right so when you go with polarographic experiment in the polarography what happens so based on the light wavelength absorption the solution concentration can be measured in the polarography polarography polarity is the major re uh, major reason and light plays a important role here right so here in case of this one uh, how much we are employing we are employing uh, plus 0.4 volts uh, potential is employed here then what could be the possibility so in this polarography dropping mercury electrode is used as a electrode in this dropping mercury electrode is used if you are employing the potential region in between plus 0.4 to minus 1.8 volts what happens more than plus uh, 0.4 uh, volts can be applied but silver can be converted into silver monopositive silver to silver monopositive is possible 
so if you are taking more than this minus 1.8 volts if it is greater than plus 0.4 volts what happens silver to silver positive is possible mercury to mercurous what you can say this is a kind of system called oxidation mercury to mercurous formation is possible now if you are employing minus 1.8 volts more than this more than this voltage is employed there is a liberation of hydrogen gas is possible two conditions are possible for this dropping mercury electrode which employed in the polarographic experiment where based on the light there is a possibility to assign the concentration for the given sample solution so if you are uh, if you are applying more than plus 0.4 what could be the condition silver turned into a silver positive sorry mercury turned into a hg stands for what hierargium right hg is a hierargium okay so hg to hg mono positive will be generated 20 for question number 26 option number 1 is the correct answer let us move on to question number 27 the correct order of isomeric shift in the mass bar spectra iron 57 source of iron compound is what will be the correct order of isomeric shift first we have to check what is mean by isomeric shift isomeric shift is nothing but so any atom uh, is replaced with its own isomer what is the change in the signal position in the mass spectra is called iso isomeric shift for example if you are replacing fe plus 2 with fe plus 3 what is the change in its signal fe plus 3 replaced with fe plus 3 uh, fe plus 4 what happens what is the change in its signal position that uh, transition is said to be a isomeric shift if any atom uh, replaced with its own isomer then what will be the change in the uh, position of the spectral line in the mass bar spectra is known as isomeric shift so let us see there is a uh, statistical data which is provided i collected this data from research gate so isomeric shift value of fe plus 2 was taken uh, as 0.96 fe plus 3 was taken as 0.40 so same will be repeated for several times okay so fe plus 2 0.96 fe plus 3 taken as 0.40 this is obvious that as the charge increases isomeric shift value is gradually decreasing fe plus 2 will be higher followed by fe plus 3 and the least is imparted for fe plus 4 this is also measured in the graphical representation form fe plus 3 uh, sorry fe plus 2 value isomeric shift will be taken on this direction it will be in the topmost place and followed by there is a mixture uh, of fe plus 3 and fe plus 2 that will be the moderate condition and the least isomeric shift is imparted around 0.4 at um, Uh, this position so this is a graphical representation of isomeric shift of all these iron ions so just now we already defined what is meant by isomeric shift let us recall one more time isomeric shift denotes what spectral lines are uh, gamma spectral lines especially in uh, uh, this mass bar spectral gamma spectral lines will be considered right so these are mainly consequence of replacement of one molecular uh, isomer with any other so if we are replacing one isomer with any other what will be the change in the position of these spectral lines is uh, said to be a isomeric shift right so based on that fe plus 2 will be higher followed by fe plus 3 and the least will be imparted for fe plus 4 for question number 27 option number 1 will be the right answer let us move on to question number 28 the heptacity is x and y of the arene moiety is in the diamagnetic complex n uh, neta x c6 h6 ruthenium neta y c6 h6 respectively this is a question given from organo metallics organo metallics are nothing but metal organic compound when uh, they are able to form a complex type of structures being organic moieties are the ligands so there is a possibility of organo metallic compounds now we have to predict the heptacity of x and y so x y terms should be indicated what is meant by heptacity heptacity is the term which is denoted with the symbol called neta right heptacity means what uh, how many electrons that ligand is going to be contributed to the complex formation is called its heptacity if uh, benzene is uh, providing six electrons now you can say neta six it will be means it used to contribute six electrons for the complex formation if this benzene second benzene is giving only two electrons to the central metal you can indicate neta 2 it will be 
Neater two denotes what? Only two electrons will be contributed by second benzene. Being it is six pi electron system, but not a not all the electrons will participate in the bond donation, right? Because so many factors, electronic factors will uh, play in order to stabilize the molecule. Ultimate uh, condition required will be final product should be highly stable in nature. How it will become stable? If it attain 18 pi electron system, that is 18 electron system is retained by this one, that will become highly stable. The uh, ultimate step should be that should retain 18 electron system. In order to get that right 18 electron system, we have to predict a uh, total valency electron count so that we, we can easily find what will be the heptacity of uh, one benzene and a second benzene. So for that purpose, let us see the entire structure. Uh, heptacity is nothing but number of electron pairs donated, uh, number of electrons donated by the given ligand. I'm taking two benzene molecules and the central metal will be the ruthenium. Here is a benzene and here is also benzene. And uh, one benzene is giving uh, four electrons. When four electrons are given by one benzene uh, and uh, remaining second benzene is uh, contributing six electrons, what? all the electrons present within the ligand are able to contribute it towards the central metal. So here, how many electrons it will become? Four given by one benzene. Here I denoted with four. Uh, and the second benzene is giving six electrons. Being ruthenium is the member of uh, iron family. Iron uh, D6 configuration will be there. So six electrons in the D orbital and two electrons will be in S orbital. Total eight valency electrons will be imparted for ruthenium. So four from one benzene, eight from ruthenium, six from second benzene. Total electrons will be 18. This is the ultimate uh, thing what we require in order to impart the stability to the complex. 18 electron rule will be applied so that it will be more stable molecule. Then from this data, you can clearly assume that X value will be four, Y value will be six. So that uh, it will attain the electron configuration will be four, y will be six. That is the valuable only in the option number three. For question number 28, option number three will be the right answer. Let us move on to question number 29. The rate of reaction equal tetracarbonyl treated with triphenyl phosphine under uh, light irradiation conditions, it turned into nickel tricarbonyl phosphine plus carbonyl. This depends upon. So here uh, in this uh, photochemical reaction, what is the rate? rate of the reaction to be predicted. You can say it is a chemical kinetic question. Otherwise, you can say it is a photochemistry question also, right? Because they both are interrelated in this. Now, uh, let us see the detailed mechanism for this one so that you can assume where uh, rate determining step is there. Wherever rate determining step will be there, that will become rate of the reaction. Let us predict a uh, rate determining step in this molecule. Nickel tetracarbonyl being it is a tetrahydral in nature and associated with sp3 kind of hybridization, all the carbonyl groups uh, inclined in the regular tetrahedral structure, tetrahedral corners so being occupied by carbonyl groups in this. So when it uh, irradiated with light, being it is a rate determining step, slow step, it will participate in the dissociation so that it exactly resembles SN1 kind of mechanism. What happens in SN1 mechanism? Unique molecular nucleophilic substance Institution. Initially, breakage of the leaving group is possible and uh, one intermediate compound will be generated that further treated with the nucleophile which is coming in and uh, eventually you will get the final product. This is the series of reactions which are carried in the SN1 mechanism. In the similar manner here also we are taking tetracarbonyl of nickel. Rate determining step will be the uh, dissociation of this one being it is a dissociation step. Light will be radiated. Under light conditions, fusion of the bond is possible. One of the carbonyl group will be discarded and you will find an empty uh, site on this uh, central nickel and uh, one of the empty uh, site will be generated. You can say this is the, this is the intermediate compound generated being it is a trivalent nickel that will participate in the reaction with any other nucleophile coming in called a triphenylphosphine. This is said to be a association step and we will get again uh, retention of tetrahedral geometry here and uh, phenyl uh, triphenyl phosphine group is added at this position and this will be the final product and what they are asking for what will be the rate of the reaction wherever rds is there that means rate determining step is there that will be the rate of the reaction so it purely depends upon the concentration of nickel tetra carbonyl 
So nickel tetracarbonyl concentration is provided only in the option number two. For question number 29, option number two will be the right answer. Let us move on to question number 30. The product of the reaction of propene, carbon, carbon monoxide and hydrogen in the presence of uh, CO taken twice, uh, carbonyl taken eight as a catalyst. This is a transition metal complex of uh, cobalt. It is in dimer form, dimer of a metal uh, carbonyl compound. And uh, what will be the product of this one? So what will be the starting material? We are taking propene, being it is organic compound, will be added with carbon monoxide and hydrogen. In the presence of, uh, in the presence of this carbonyl CO taken eight as a catalyst, what will be the final product? This is a kind of a reaction called hydroformylation. What will be the product in hydroformylation? The uh, product will be aldehyde. So aldehyde will be available only in the option number two. Let us see the detailed mechanism. When we take the propene, being it is a pi bond containing molecule, uh, three carbon containing system will be added with uh, carbon monoxide and hydrogen in the presence of cobalt complex. And we have to employ high temperature and the pressure conditions both. Uh, extremely high temperature and pressure both will be employed in order to uh, perform this hydroformylation reaction. And uh, what happens, this used to convert it into uh, aldehyde functional group. And uh, there is a extension of the carbon chain is possible. And you can find four carbon atoms in the final product. This is known as a butyraldehyde. The final product will be the butyraldehyde and the IUPAC name will be a butanol that is given in the option number two. For question number 30, option number two will be the right answer. Let us move on to question number 31. This is a question from group theory. The S and L values of nitrogen 15 atom respectively. If you are taking nitrogen 15, this is the isotope of nitrogen 14. If any isotope was taken, isotope contains same number of electrons same number of protons, but only the deviation in number of neutrons are possible. That's the reason why mass number will be changed, but not atomic number, right? So this is the important concept we have to learn. So then only we can find what is this, what is L, right? S is nothing but spin multiply, uh, spin of uh, spin quantum number, L is nothing but azimuthal quantum number. These two to be predicted for nitrogen 15 isotope. So even it is nitrogen 15, somewhat tricky in nature, but we are not uh, get confused with the nitrogen 15 because we are not going to change number of electrons for this. Because so only isotopes are uh, considered with neutrons. Neutrons will not play a role in this, uh, what S and L values, right? So that let us take nitrogen 15. Even if it is nitrogen 15 electron configuration will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p3 itself. Being it is half filled, you can assign three electrons in accordance with the Kunz uh, rule one, two, three electrons will be incorporated in uh, p orbital and all uh, uh, all electrons are, are associated with the positive spin. So here, uh, azimuthal angular quantum number will be imparted as plus one, zero, minus one. Plus one, zero, minus one will be the angular momentum quantum number and a spin will be plus half, plus half, plus half. If we add three plus halves, it will be three by two. Plus half plus half, it will be one. One plus half, it will be three by two, right? So here spin multiplicity. If you want to calculate spin multiplicity, it will be 2s plus one, two into three by two plus one. So 2s plus one value taken as four because two, two get canceled and three plus one, it will be four only. But it is not given in the problem, not required to calculate. Then what will be L value, angular momentum value? Uh, here, plus one, minus one magnitude are opposite. That's why you can cancel both. Zero, obviously, zero itself. Then L value is imported as zero. Being it is L is equal to zero, the term symbol will become S. But it is also not required. They only asking for what is S, what is L. S will be three by two, L will be zero, right? So S will be three by two, L will be zero provided in option number four. For question number 31, option number four will be the correct answer. Let us move on to question number 32. Again, it is a question from group theory. The point group symmetries of the trans, uh, trans chromium EN taken twice F2 positive, titanium Cl6 minus 3 respectively, right? So here they mentioned as trans compound. So when trans compound was taken, what will be the symmetry point group and uh, titanium uh, hexachloride minus 3? 
what will be the symmetry point group both should be predicted for that purpose first let us uh, take a titanium hexachloride minus 3 this is the octahedral structure of titanium hexachloride minus 3 two axial chloro and four equatorial chloro will be there this is the octahedral structure and uh, uh, this molecule is associated with c4 axis of symmetry c4 axis of symmetry will be there and uh, 4C2 axis of symmetry uh, will be uh, imparted for this one. Here is 1C2, here is 1C2, here is 1C2, here is 1C2. Two diagonal, one vertical, one horizontal. 4C2 symmetry axis will be there. Sig four sigma V planes are there because all the ligands are identical in nature. So sigma vertical planes, here also sigma vertical will be there, here also sigma vertical, here also sigma vertical. In this manner, sigma vertical, uh, four sigma vertical will be there and uh, moreover, so clearly you can put a mirror in the horizontal plane also so that sigma horizontal is also there. C4, 4 C2, 4 sigma V and 1 sigma H will be there so that if we combine all these that will become a symmetry point group of D4H. For uh, titanium hexachloride the point group symmetry will be D4H. Now let us move on to trans, uh, uh, trans chromium compound. So here, uh, uh, they are only asking for trans, but here we mentioned with cis and trans both. Cis is nothing but if two fluoro groups are on the same side and two ethylene diamine moieties are on the same side, this is said to be a cis. Only the possibility will be C2 axis of symmetry. This is not required. Cis is not mentioned in the problem. Only the requirement is trans chloro en taken by F2 positive. En is nothing but ethylene diamine being it is a bidentate that used to form a chelate ring around the chromium. And being it is a trans, you can incline these two ethylene diamine moieties in the opposite direction. Two equatorial positions are occupied by the EN. Two axial positions are occupied by the fluorine. And both are separated by 180 degrees rotation, 180 degrees angle. Right? So here, this will be the trans compound chromium EN taken for F2 positive. Here, you can uh, put uh, C2 axis in this direction. Here also C2, here also C2 will be there. Right? So three C2 axis will be there and it will become D2 uh, point group of symmetry. For this trans compound, D2 point group of symmetry is available. So this is about question number th 32. Now let us move on to question number 33. Cobalt 4, CO taken 12 adopts. Cobalt 4, CO taken 12 adopts. So this is a kind of system called uh, metal polycarbonyl. Metal polycarbonyl system whatever the carbonyl system is there carbonyl being it is neutral in nature always central metal will be associated with a zero oxidation state then so cobalt 4 co taken 12 adopts what kind of cluster structure that to be predicted closo nido arachno hypo closo so when we take main group element that should obey that should obey n plus 2 n plus 4 n plus 6 n plus 8 in case of uh, Sorry, 4n plus 2, 4n plus 4, 4n plus 6, 4n plus 8. That is for main group elements. In order to assign this uh, weights rule, so for transition metals, they have to obey 14n plus 2, 14n plus 4, 14n plus 6, and 14n plus 8. 14n plus 2 will be there. That is said to be a close. 14n plus 4 is called a nido. 14n plus 6 is called arachno. 14n plus 8 is called hypo. Clado will be there. Right. So, in this manner, you can assign the cluster structure for the given metal carbonyls. Let us go with their uh, total valency electron count. When we take uh, CO taken 4, CO taken 12, adopts the cluster structure. How many cobalt metals are there? 4. Then, what will be the uh, valency electron count of cobalt? Being cobalt is a D D7 system, 7 electrons in D orbital, 2 electrons in S orbital. 7 plus 2, it will be 9. 7 plus 2, it will be 9. Then carbonyl. How many carbonyl groups are there? 12. Each carbonyl contribute how many electrons? 2. So 4 into 9, it will be 36. 12 into 2, it will be 24. 36 plus 24, 58 will be the total electron count. That means valency electron count for this one. Total valency electrons are calculated as 58 for this cobalt system. So, 
uh, being it is a 58 uh, we have to employ this 14 n plus x because we don't know what is the x value if you know x value that is the cluster structure you can easily determine 14 n n denotes what how many metal atoms are there how many are there four metal atoms are there within the cluster so 14 into 4 plus x is equal to 58 uh. 14 into 4, it will be 56 plus x is equal to 58. How much difference 58 minus 56, it will be 2. So that means 14 n plus 2 is equal to what will be the cluster? 14 n plus 2 become closer. 14 n plus 4 becomes needle. So that's why for being it is a 14 n plus 2 system, you can say is the closer cluster, right? So closer cluster provide the option number one. For question number 33, option number one will be the correct answer. And here is the structure. So central cobalt, how many are there? Four cobalt moieties are there. And this is an interconnection between the cobalt. And each cobalt have terminal carbonyl. Three terminal carbonyl groups are there. Here three, here three, here three, here three. So being it is a CO, uh, CO equal uh, polycarbonyl system it is. And this will be the cluster structure. Closer is nothing but caged type of structure will be there. You can clearly find the caged type of structure among these uh, cobalt, right? So this will be the, closer will be the correct answer. Question number 33, option number one will be the right answer. Let us move on to question number 34. Reductive elimination step uh, involved in the hydrogenation of all kings by Wilkinson catalyst results in neglecting solvent in the coordination sphere of rhodium. So Wilkinson catalyst is a suitable catalyst for the reduction purpose. So it is a reducing agent. Being it is the system of rhodium and having uh, diphenyl groups, diphenyl phosphine groups, sorry, triphenyl phosphine groups and one chloro will be there. What will be the IUPAC name of this compound? Chlorotrace triphenyl phosphine rhodium one. So here around rhodium, Tris triphenyl. So being it is a complex system, you, you have to assign tris. So if it is a single li a simple ligand, you can say tri. If complex ligands are there, you have to indicate tris. So uh, in order to assign the IUPAC name, we have to follow with the uh, alphabetical order. So in the alphabetical order, phosphine and chloro, C will come first. That's why chloro will be indicated first. Chloro followed by tris triphenyl phosphine. And the central metal will be rhodium and its oxidation should be mentioned. Oxidation state always mentioned uh, with the, uh, its ligands, whichever carrying the charge. So here chlorine being it is a negative minus one. So in order to neutralize the rhodium should acquire plus one charge. So that rhodium will be plus one. That is indicated in the Roman number, right? So this will be the IUPAC name of this uh, Wilkinson catalyst. And uh, what will be the geometry of the molecule? It will be it will be square planar. In order to in order to attain the square planar, what will be the hybridization for the molecule? DSP2 hybridization will be imparted. One D orbital, one S orbital, two P orbitals will be participating in the hybridization process. DSP2 and chlorotrace triphenyl phosphine rhodium one is the IUPAC name of the compound. And the square planar complex geometry will be imparted. Uh, what will be be the purpose of this one it is the homogeneous hydrogenation catalyst for hydrogenation purpose we are using this uh, uh, wilkinson catalyst and it is set to be a 16 electron system if it is 16 electron system always have a tendency always have tendency to acquire the 18 electron configuration right and uh, it is present in the plus one oxidation state participating in the dsp2 hybridization uh, for uh, rhodium metal and it can be synthesized by taking rhodium trichloride, aqua solution of rhodium trichloride and treated with excess of triphenyl phosphine molecule in the presence of protic solvent called ethanol. And it turned into a chlorotrace triphenyl phosphine rhodium one complex along with a uh, release of phosphine. So this is called phosphine, which can be discarded as a byproduct. Then what is the major purpose of this uh, Wilkinson catalyst, especially used for the reduction of olefins, double bond? compounds went with uh, Wilkinson catalyst and uh, hydrogen of one atmospheric pressure. Benzene, ethanol, a protic and protic solvent mixture can be employed for this kind of transformation and the room temperature is sufficient in order to perform the reaction. So double bonded system is turned into a single bonded system by this reduction process. This is called uh, the main application of this one. 
during this process during this process the uh, what happens this wilkinson catalyst was taken and initially it will participate in the ring cleavage called a dissociation step one of the triphenyl paspin will be discarded so that it turned into a rhh pph3 cl rhh pph3 cl will be generated this is a kind of system called a t shaped intermediate further it will be incorporated with hydrogen and turned into a pentavalent transition state subsequently added with the alkene olefinic moiety and that will be uh, that will be attached to the central metal and subsequently it added with the hydrogen which is present at this adjacent center called beta hydrogen elimination this is a step called beta hydrogen elimination hydrogen from metal now uh, attached to the carbon and eventually they are turned into a alkene this is the cyclic process the continuation of any other uh, uh, reduction process so this is a mechanism which is imparted for this one in the uh, uh, in the hydrogenation so reductive elimination step for hydrogenation process t shaped intermediate will be formed that is available in the option number 1 t shaped rhodium pph3 taken by cl intermediate will be formed so this is a correct answer that is available in the option number 1 for question number 34 option number 1 will be the correct answer let us move on to question number 35 last question of the series in the following reaction Uh, tetra chloro platinum plus two was taken. This is a square planar complex of platinum. So whenever you observe any platinum or palladium complex, most of the palladium platinum complexes are existing in square planar geometry, and it will be treated with the uh, the ligand called NO two minus nitro ligand will be added, and uh, this will be turned into a compound A. This compound A will be further treated with any other nucleophile nucleophilic ligand called ammonia. and uh, we will get the final product b then we have to find what will be the reaction sequence and what are the products a and b let us go with the detailed mechanism the starting material will be tetrachloroplatinum plus 2 or tetrachloroplatinate plus 2 uh, and this is a square planar complex which clearly in, uh, described in this starting material now it will be treated with nitro ligand so nitro ligand used to replace one of the chloro functional group so that you will get uh, Tri chloro nitro platinate two compound. This will be the compound number A. What we are looking for. After getting this one, so there is a there is a uh, what uh, ambiguity in order to get the product uh, to get the final product uh, when it is treated with ammonia. When ammonia is treated either this end position or opposite position, both can be occupied. Both are feasible. in order to get it right so here if we are adding this ammonia in the adjacent position here this is a product of formation and this will be the any other product of formation the trans product will be the major trans why it is indicated as trans because chloro are inclined in this manner this is said to be a trans chloro are in adjacent manner called as isomer so trans product obviously will be the major product because because a uh, chloro group having higher trans ff nature that's the reason why always the group will be inclined in the trans direction so we will get the product of trans is the major one that will be the compound number b we are going to expect here so here the final product they are asking for compound b only not a compound b will be trans platinum cl2 no2 nh3 minus that is available in the option number 1 by this the entire series of csir net grf chemical signs Uh, December two thousand fourteen, Part B, Series One has uh, completed. Uh, hope this session will be helpful for your preparation. Thank you very much for your patience, consistent listening. Thank you, one and all.